Hey friends, today I am excited to do a video on what is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated and underappreciated budget-friendly vegetables, and that's cabbage. So here's the first of what will probably be a couple of cabbages in this video. I bought this cabbage on sale, 49 cents a pound. It was just under three pounds, so it came to $1.43. For dinner tonight, we're having chicken sandwiches with a cabbage slaw on them. The cabbage slaw was super easy and simple to make. It's a really light, fresh, vinegar-based slaw. We just sliced the cabbage into thin ribbons and placed them into a jar. We're making a very quick brine made from salt and then about a 50-50 ratio of water and apple cider vinegar, though feel free to adjust that to taste. Give it a quick shake and then just let it sit in the jar for an hour or two. That's all there is to it. For our chicken sandwiches, we use these patties made of ground chicken that I buy when I see them marked down. We've got our cast iron heating up on the stove and are making sure to season these patties very well. Then we just cook them for a few minutes on each side until they're fully cooked through and have some nice color on them. Andrew also likes to baste these in a little melted butter right before they come out of the pan just to give them a little extra fat and flavor. We served our patties on burger buns. That's just some reheated rice, bean, and veggie leftovers that we're eating as a side with our sandwiches. I used a red chili hot sauce and then put some of our cabbage slaw on it. The extra slaw can be stored in the fridge for several days and will become stronger tasting the longer it sits. And there's my sandwich. The cabbage is really good on top of that. Very like fresh and very good. It gives you like the crispness of a pickle that you would want, mm -hmm. but it's all over the sandwich. <laughs> Instead of you bite the one pickle and it all comes out with one bite. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah, I'm just devouring my... <laughs> well, we're going to actually go sit down and eat the rest of this. <laughs> You're going to sit down and eat the rest of it. I'm going to be done. Okay, he's getting a second sandwich. You can <laughs> sit with me for the second sandwich. <laughs> hey friends, if last night's lightly pickled cabbage was a little bit too fresh and raw for you, uh, you'll probably like tonight's a lot better. I'll be sauteing my cabbage, but first I need to start some pierogi because we're not just having sauteed, cab sauteed cabbage, even though I definitely could just eat an entire bowl of it when it's cooked right, but we're also having pierogi, so I'm gonna get that started. And my go-to pasta recipe uh, starts with one cup of flour. Then I'm adding one egg and one half cup of flour, and I will mix that all together well. I lied y'all, it's two cups of flour. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Normally I remember it because it, in my head it's two, one half. So two cups of flour, one egg, and then half a cup of water. So I'm just gonna mix this really well real quick. Once it's mostly together, I switch to using my hands. Pasta dough is very easy and forgiving if it's too dry after kneading it for a minute or so, just add a little bit of water, just like a teaspoon at a time. If it's too wet, just add a little more flour, no big deal. And I should only need to knead this for like around five, maybe seven minutes total. Even though that dough looked really, really shaggy there a minute ago, I did not need to add any more moisture. Uh, I'll just keep kneading this for another few minutes. And then here's my dough. It's nice and uh, smooth now, but I am gonna let that rest for like 20 or 30 minutes. It's just, just gonna let the, the dough relax and it's gonna be a lot easier to roll out and work with. And I'm still gonna make my filling anyway. Here are the potatoes I'm using. Hopefully this is the right amount of potatoes. It feels like that's always a guessing game. You could definitely peel these, but I don't care and I don't feel like it. I don't mind the potato skins. So we're gonna have potato skins in our pierogi. I'm cooking these potatoes in my Instant Pot because for me, it is the quickest, easiest way to do so. So I'm just cutting them in some big chunks. Honestly, not that different than if you were going to be boiling them in a pot of uh, water on the stove. It's probably too much potato, but if I end up with like extra mashed potatoes, who cares? <laughs> So I'll finish cutting these up, put a cup of water in my Instant Pot, and then just cook them for five minutes on high pressure. And then I can immediately release the pressure as soon as they are done. Even though I still have to actually make my filling and my pierogi, I am going to start on uh, sauteing the cabbage. This is just bacon fat. I feel like bacon fat and cabbage are just kind of made for each other. I'm doing a sloppy job of cutting the core out here. Yeah, it'll be alright. I'm gonna get this half of the cabbage in the pan first. So that way I've got room on the cutting board. Cut up cabbage, it just seems like it takes up so much room and it's like just like a mountain of cabbage. 
Think about cooking spinach. You'll have like a mountain of spinach. And then next thing you know, when you cook it, like where did all the spinach go? And I'll get this in the pan too. All right, so like I said, it's a giant mass of cabbage right now. And you'll see that once it is fully cooked, it is not gonna be anywhere near this volume. Also chopping up an onion to go with my cabbage. I'm adding the onion in now too. I just realized I diced it when I rather would have had it in strips, but it really doesn't matter. But I'm adding it in now because the onion and cabbage together both can handle a really long cook time. I'm also adding a bell pepper in a little bit, but I'll wait till later to add that in because I don't want that to be cooked quite as much or as long as these. All right, here's my cooked potatoes. I'm putting some of this butter in it that has been sitting in my, bleh, sitting in my fridge since Thanksgiving. So might as well add that in. Pierogi filling is, I did drain these by the way, but pierogi filling is very similar to mashed potatoes don't stress too much on like the idea of having to follow a super specific recipe or way of doing it in my mind it's mostly about getting the right flavor and the right texture you don't want it to be too runny just because then it's going to be hard to fill the pierogi otherwise just make a filling that tastes really good to you and don't worry about it too much beyond that <laughs> In terms of cheese, I'm making a cheddar pierogi. Let me use the last little, I don't know, what was that even? A teaspoon of cheese from this bag? I don't know why someone didn't just finish it and throw it out. Yeah, let's just dump all that in there. I'm not doing this while uh, the mashed potatoes are nice and hot so that way the cheese will melt in. I gave my potato mixture a little taste and I'm adding Another handful of cheese and then a little bit more of all these spices. I gave the filling a taste test. It is insanely delicious. So any leftovers, I can always add a little bit of milk if I want to thin it out a little bit. As it is, this is going to be really easy to scoop into the in, onto the dough and to work with. I also almost forgot that I wanted to make a kielbasa to go with it. So I grabbed this one out of the back of my freezer. So I'm going to put this in some cold water to thaw real quick and I'm excited to add this. <laughs> I've just got my cabbage and onions cooking at a medium to medium low heat. Every few minutes, I give them a, a stir. And I'm just gonna let them keep cooking like this while I make the pierogi. Here's my dough after it's had time to rest. And I'm gonna work with it a quarter of my, a quarter at a time. Flouring my clean counter rolling my dough out. This is what I use to cut out my pierogi. And then the scraps just get set aside. And after I go through all the rest of the dough, I'll start rolling this out again. To fill the pierogi, just putting a little bit of filling in. Maybe just slightly more. I don't know, that might be too much. Either way, you get the hang of how much after you do a couple. And then I like to just kind of pull the dough around the filling a little bit, kind of stretch it, and then pinch it shut. You just want to try not to get the filling stuck in between where you're pinching it shut just because you won't get as good of a seal. And if your fingers are sticking to the dough, or rather if the dough is sticking to your fingers, just get a little bit of flour on them and then just Pinch it nice and tight, and that's all there is to it. That is your basic pierogi. I am almost done with filling my pierogi. This uh, cabbage and onion, you can tell it has been cooking down for a while. I mean, it's probably like 20 to 25% of the volume of cabbage that it was before. Andrew, do you mind adding some salt and pepper to that? Sure. I wanna get these uh, bell peppers cut up real quick to add. I just put uh, water on the stove to start boiling for my pierogi. And then here is my bell pepper. That's two bell peppers. They came in a bag marked down three for a dollar. So that was pretty exciting. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm adding the bell pepper much closer to the end because if I left them in that entire time, they'd be like mush right now. My sausage uh, thawed beautifully in that cold water. 
get that out. My water is almost boiling for the gravy. I was going to do this in two separate pans, but just because of how things are lining up and like time wise and in the interest of not dirtying an extra pan, I'm just going to take my veggies here, which are done out and put them into this bowl just for the time being. And then my water's boiling, so I'm going to drop my pierogi in. I'm basically just adding however many I think can fit in this pot without them sticking together. And then I like to just give them a quick stir to make sure that they don't stick to the bottom or to each other. Because it's fresh pasta, it's going to cook very, very quickly. Just two or three minutes. Once they're floating, they will be done. I'm going to pop some butter in here and then I'm going to fry them up as soon as they're floating. Also going to get my sausage cut up very quickly here. The sausage is fully cooked, but I am going to give it a quick little trip into the pan to heat it up and maybe get a little bit of color on it. These are looking gorgeous. I've got my second batch boiling. They are almost done. So I'll toss these in the bowl with the veggies and then get those in the pan to get some nice color on them. Obviously making these pierogi are the most time consuming and the most effort of this dinner tonight. There's no shame if you were to just grab yourself a box of Mrs. T's pierogies. They were a staple of mine growing up. That being said, I don't know what I spent on these. <laughs> I just flipped them all. But Mrs. T's are what, like three or four dollars for a dozen these days. I don't know, it's been a while since I've bought them. And I made, I don't, I don't, I didn't uh, count, but like 35, 40 pierogi. And I doubt I spent four dollars in ingredients. Some flour, an egg, some potatoes, a little bit of cheese, and a little bit of seasonings. We're probably talking like sub three dollars for 35, 40 pierogi. Like that's, that's pretty dang good. All right, pierogi are done. And ideally what like I normally do, I cook them all tonight, but a lot of times what I'll do is I will cook half of them and I'll freeze the other half. So that way the next time I want some, it doesn't have to be, I don't have to go through the process of making them all. This is just gonna cook for a minute or two. Mainly I'm just trying to heat it up and get just a little bit of color on it. This is done. I just had a taste. It tastes so, so good. That is a good sausage. I'm turning the heat off and then I'm gonna dump everything back in the pan. And I'll probably take this off the heat entirely in just a minute here, but I just wanna really stir everything together. Since those veggies sat for a minute, just make sure everything is nice and hot and just get it all mixed in with those flavors meld together. You can get a very uh, full pot of food here, can of food here, but this is going to be amazing. And I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have enough of this for lunch tomorrow as well. So that's always exciting. Think about how before this was almost this full with just cabbage. And then now it is this whole delicious meal taking up just about the same volume in the pan. So this is ready to eat. That is so good. Sauteed cabbage is one of my favorite things. This is just one example of a dish that you could use sauteed cabbage in or sauteed cabbage for. In my opinion, it's kind of like frying up onions. It can go with just about anything when you cook it down like this. I haven't 100% decided what my next cabbage dish is going to be, but I'm thinking it might be stuffed cabbage. Either way, I'm excited for it. I went out and bought two more heads of cabbage today. I don't know if you're interested in my whole little grocery haul here, but you're getting it anyway. I spent about $15 between Harris Teeter and Aldi. The star of the show, the cabbages, I got them at Harris Teeter because the sales just reset and they are on sale this week for 25 cents a pound. I got five and three quarter pound of cabbage and so I spent $1.43 on both these heads. From Harris Teeter, I also got a bag of onions for $1.99, bag of snacking carrots for 99 cents, a clearance jar of pickles for $2.25, and then I have friends coming over on Sunday. So I picked up this box of candy, Ghirardelli candy for $2. It said that the original price on this was $20. I could not imagine paying more than $10 for a little box like this, but for $2, we will definitely enjoy this on Sunday. And then I stopped at Aldi just because I wanted to pick up celery and milk. 
Those were $1.39 and $1.47. I also grabbed a can of corn for 63 cents. And then finally, eggs were $1.49 each. Last week, they were pushing $3 a dozen and they're over $3 a dozen at Harris Teeter. So when I stopped in at Aldi and I saw that these were $1.49, I picked up two dozen because with the way egg prices are right now, you have no idea what they're going to be from one week to the next. <laughs> hey friends, tonight I am making cabbage rolls. Full disclosure, I've never made cabbage rolls before. And the method I use to learn how to make a new recipe these days is I will binge watch a whole lot of videos on how to make that dish, read some blog posts, things like that. And then I will take the things from those recipes and videos and methods and things like that and adapt them to my preferred cooking styles, my preferred ingredients, things like that. What that means is that I'm not following any particular recipe, so we will see how this all works out. I have a good feeling about it though. Uh, the main thing I've gotten about cabbage rolls as I've researched how to make them, they seem easy. They seem hard to mess up. They seem like the kind of thing that you throw some meat and a bunch of ingredients that sound good to you, wrap them up in a cabbage leaf and cover it in tomato sauce, tomato soup, some type of tomato-y goodness, bake it in the oven, and that's, that's, that's about what there is to it. I am heating a little bit of bacon fat in the bottom of my pan. I'm just planning to uh, saute some onions and garlic in the bottom of the pan. As far as my cabbage goes, uh, I put it in the freezer last night. I probably should have taken it out a bit earlier in the day than I did, but I took it out when I started my rice. It's just been hanging out on the counter. I mean, it does seem like it's falling pretty nicely and I saw in a bunch of recipes and videos and stuff that that was a hack to make the leaves easier to work with, more pliable, easier to roll up without having to go through and blanch the cabbage or boil the cabbage. I'm also cutting up a second onion to go in my filling. I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, I went a little non-traditional in my filling. I figured if we were putting rice and meat in it already, what better addition than beans? Obviously, if you don't like beans, don't put them in your cabbage rolls, <laughs> but I wanted to try them. In terms of what kind of tomato product to add, I know that tomato soup and tomato sauce are both really popular choices. I went through my cabinets to see what I had. So my selection was 100% based off of what I needed to use up and get rid of, hence why I pulled out this can of crushed tomatoes with basil and this can of diced and crushed tomatoes. They both were in the back of my pantry need to get used up. Honestly, I should probably just make that its own video using up things from my pantry. I got this can from the Dollar Tree, so for $1.25. And then this can I got, my mind is going blank and I can't remember. I think it's a Harris Teeter tag. I got it for 49 cents. My onions are just about done. So it is a great time to add in my uh, garlic, my jarred minced garlic. This is actually another Dollar Tree item. So if you ever wonder if I use up the things that I buy for my Dollar Tree videos after like whatever's left, I definitely do. They take just a touch longer to saute than regular fresh minced garlic, probably because these are stored in water, so they probably soak up a good bit of water, but they still have a very short cook time. So I'll watch this for just a couple minutes to make sure that this doesn't burn. And as soon as they start, like as soon as it starts to kind of get toasty, I'll add in tomato sauce, or rather the diced and crushed tomatoes. I'm turning my heat off because this should retain heat for a little bit. Add most or all of this can of tomatoes now. My tomatoes are looking extra foamy here because I just added a little pinch of baking soda. These tomatoes in particular, I had a taste of them and they're pretty acidic. So I just want to take out just a little bit of that acidity. So now that I'm done messing around with the pan here, I'm gonna get my filling together and I have my oven preheated to 375. One last thing and then I'll be, we'll be done with the bottom here. I'm just tossing in some of this rustic Tuscan style seasoning for my meat. I'm using this Carolina Pride pork sausage that I got marked down to 239. I spent a long time being undecided about whether I was going to use all beef, use all pork, or use a mixture of pork and beef. 
So the bean I chose was pinto beans. I was torn between pinto beans, lentils, especially because I think lentils and sausage go so well together, and black beans, because I think black beans would lend itself really well to a cabbage roll. But I was also considering pinto beans because they just have such a nice creaminess. I asked Andrew and he like was immediately pinto beans. So that's what we'll go with. Because I don't want to dirty a bowl, I'm going to mix everything in here. Hopefully that works out for me. <laughs> I did let these beans cool. It was like three quarters of a cup of dried beans. I also have a cup of rice that I cooked. Man, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna need to get a bowl. Hold on. It was a good. It was a good thought. But it's a it's a cup of uncooked rice, and I let that cool as well. Ugh, I tried to help future Lisa with the dishes, but eh, it'll be alright. The glass bowl is not hard to clean and this will be much, much easier to mix. Get that meat in there as well. I'm also going to season this before I start mixing it. I definitely want to get some salt in there. Maybe some garlic powder, a good bit of onion powder, and let's get some of that Tuscan blend in there as well, and black pepper. All right, hopefully that's enough seasoning. It's a good bit of things here that I'm gonna be mixing and because of the raw meat it's not like I can taste it and there's what that looks like all mixed up you could certainly go more meat forward if you want it and add another pound or half pound of ground meat whether that be beef or pork or turkey or whatever this definitely has a good bit of rice and beans by volume I'm kind of excited uh, having the beans as kind of like a extender so hopefully I can fill more cabbage rolls with my just pound of ground sausage, but I also really like, love beans, remember? So whenever I add beans to something, I'm excited about it. It's never a concession that I'm unhappy to make or something like that. I'm betting you could also make some pretty good cabbage rolls that omit the meat entirely. These leaves come off nice and easily. Get a nice little chunk of filling. I'm bad at overfilling stuffed anything so we'll see how this goes but just roll the sides in roll that up and then it'll go seam side down into the dish and then pull the next leaf off one reason that i'm glad i didn't cook the sausage first because i thought about it because i also like i said you know i read so many different ways of doing this and uh, some people do like to cook their meat first. I didn't want to because I don't want to lose that fat from the cabbage rolls because fat is flavor and I want all that flavor. Recipes also vary a lot on whether you should be cooking your rice or not cooking your rice. I think if I was going to not cook my rice, I'd be more inclined to use like minute rice or something. I don't know, I would just worry about going through all this work and having undercooked rice when it's not that much effort to cook some in the rice cooker and I don't know I, I I really don't anticipate a problem with them like with it being like overcooked or anything. I still technically have some little leaves left and just a little bit of filling left but I'm starting to doubt how much more I can fit in here especially because I still need to add more tomatoes into here. I'm not even really sure how much this can of tomatoes is gonna fit. Hopefully some of it kind of will fall down into the crevices. But if I don't use it all, it's not a big deal. I can just toss it in some rice or something when I make dinner in the next few days. As far as this extra filling, I'm just gonna stick it on there. Kind of crumble it around. I'd rather it get cooked in with this than not used. And then hopefully that pork fat will just, you know, release a little bit of delicious flavors into the sauce. Yeah, this is gonna be full. I do have a lid for this. Hopefully, and it's a heavy lid, so hopefully it is enough to keep this from like bubbling over and spilling out. I might actually put a tray underneath the veg. I don't know, let me start pouring this tomato sauce in and we'll see. We'll see what it actually looks like in practice. I just don't want it spilling like all over the bottom of my oven because you can see uh, the cabbage rolls are higher than, than the edge of the pan. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this big sheet pan in the oven and then 
I'll set this down on top of that just in case. I'm also, I have a little bit of sauce left in here. I think I'm gonna not put any more on and I'll cook it for like 20 or 30 minutes and then bringing out. And then if there's room, I can add a little bit more. If not, I'll just put this in a container. But in total, I'm gonna cook this for an hour, probably an hour and a half. Like I said, I'll take it out after like 30 minutes and see if there's any room for the sauce. Here is my lid, which like I said, is nice and heavy and hopefully will prevent it from bubbling out, spilling out over the sides. I'm gonna get this in the oven and hope for the best. <laughs> Alrighty friends, this has officially been cooking for an hour and a half. I'm very, very glad that I put this on the sheet pan because I don't know if you can see, but I definitely had a little bit of tomato sauce leak out of this thing. It's weird because I took it out at the 30 minute mark and it looked like there was no chance that anything was going to spill. So I added the rest of the tomato sauce. It ended up not being very much, but I guess as it continued to cook, everything probably wilted and sank down and pushed a little bit out. That or the lid wasn't set as firmly, but I'm going with it probably sank down a little bit. In any case, this smells really, really good. So I hope it tastes as good as it smells and looks. I guess it's not like really very saucy at this point, but that's why I didn't think it was gonna spill because it seemed like the tomatoes were kind of drying out a little bit. I guess I do have the option of opening a can of a jar of spaghetti sauce if I feel like this needs it, but I'm hoping it'll be good on its own. Mm, I don't think the, I don't think it's gonna need any more tomato sauce because those flavors pop. Mm, that is really good here. Andrew, take a bite of this before you get your own plate. That is really good. Oh yeah. man, if I had like some mozzarella on it, like in it or something, like mm. just shredded cheese, like ooh. <laughs> I think this definitely goes on the to make again rotation. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Last thing, Andrew was absolutely right. A little bit of shredded cheese on top of this mozzarella is so good on it. And if you were wondering how those beans were in it, I personally think they were a great compliment. What do you think about the beans in it, Andrew? I honestly don't even notice them. But yeah. I Andrew didn't even realize I had actually put the beans in. So if that tells you anything. So if you're looking for a way to bulk it out a little bit, apparently you can add pinto beans and it's not super noticeable. Anyway, I will be with y'all for the next cabbage meal. Hey friends, you could probably figure out pretty quickly what we we're having tonight. Aldi had the cheapest prices this week on corned beef. I did get a pretty small one. It's only like two and a half pounds. I probably should have gotten one that's a little bit bigger, but it'll be all right. I don't have the cabbage out yet. That comes into play a little later, but getting this corned beef going is very quick and easy. I'm gonna be cooking it in my pressure cooker. So I'm adding one onion that I've diced up, a couple spoonfuls of minced garlic. I have a beer here that I will crack open in just a minute. It did take me a second there to find the little pack of seasonings in, in with all that brine. That was kind of the, the grosser uh, aspect of this whole thing. I've got that added in as well. Let me move this so you can maybe see what I've got going on. But I mean, it's really not much to look at. Yeah, I have this big old beer because it was one of the cheapest and just easiest for me to grab. It's kind of just a standard lager, not overly powerful. I know some people prefer Guinness for their corned beef and cabbage. I'm happy just to go with kind of a more generic lager. I didn't need the whole can. That's why I just measured out uh, 12 ounces. And then I'm also gonna add another one and a half, two cups of water on top of that. Two cups it is. And all I'm doing is popping the lid on and I'm gonna cook it for 90 minutes. I know some recipes for instant pot corned beef will call for a quick release, but I don't really like to do quick releases on meat like that. So I will be letting this natural release when the time is done. Now we're on to the veggie portion. I am cutting up carrots and of course our cabbage. I always love how they look like little lobsters on the inside. Let me get that stocky part out the center. And then I'll just cut these into nice big kind of wedges. I'm putting all of this into the pressure cooker right here. It seems like a lot, but as we know, cabbage will wilt down a lot. And I just made a decision about something. We're also having potatoes, but I'm gonna cook them separately. So I'll just go ahead and start these for five minutes. 
I know people tend to just chop up the potatoes and put them in with the cabbage and carrots, but I really want mashed potatoes, so I just decided it would be easier to cook them separately. Here's what that corned beef looks like after letting it rest for a few minutes and then slicing it up. I had a little tiny taste of it and it is so tender, which is no surprise because cutting it up, it, I mean, it was just so easy to cut. There's my carrots and cabbage. I also have a whole bunch of that juice that was in the Instant Pot that this all cooked in. I had a little taste of it and by itself, it is an incredibly flavorful liquid. It would be perfectly delicious to just pour over all of this. I wanted to see if I could make a decent gravy real quick. That's a cup and a half of the liquid. And then I still have like another two or three cups that can just be spooned over the, the veggies and corned beef not being a gravy. So I have these packets in my cabinet that were left over from another video. And in my continued interest of getting rid of things that have been in my cabinet for a while, I'm going to try to use one of these with that liquid that's in the, in the Instant Pot and see if I can get a nice gravy out of it. So how this gravy technically works is you're supposed to mix it with a cup of cold water and then heat it up on the stove and then it gets really thick. You see I dip just a little bit of water in here. I'm going to try a different tactic and if this doesn't work I still have the other li liquid that I set aside. But so instead of mixing this in with a cup of cold water, I've got, I mean I'll probably have done a little bit less, but I've got like a third cup of cold water. And then I'm going to add this into the liquid that's in the instant pot, turn it on the saute setting, and let that heat up and see if that works out. Here's what that gravy looks like. If I recall last time I made it, it really thickened up as it cooled down a little bit. So I'm just gonna let this go for another 30 to 60 seconds and then I'll turn the heat off. All right, y'all, here is the full dinner. This gravy turned out so incredibly good. The gravy mix gave it a little, you know, it thickened it up a little bit and gave it a little bit of extra beefy flavor. But the flavors that were in the cooking liquid that makes up most of this gravy shine through and it is i'm so impressed with how this gravy turned out here's my finished plate everything is so delicious the cabbage cooked like this it's so tender and just so flavorful like even if you're not a cabbage fan it's definitely worth trying it if you ever have the opportunity to try it somewhere cooked like this Hey friends, I bought two more cabbages, although I think this may be the last one that makes it in this particular video. We have pickled our cabbage, sauteed our cabbage, stuffed our cabbage, and steam slash pressure cooked our cabbage. And today we're gonna be baking our cabbage. So I started out by removing the couple outer leaves. So we just got a real nice head of cabbage here to work with. And I'm gonna cut this into nice big thick slices. I cut the little nub off the bottom because it'll be easier to uh, cut these slices. So the slices that have a nice big fat chunk of the stalk here, I'll also cut that out. Which I think really was just that one, that one center slice. I've got a nice big sheet pan here. I'm gonna place my cabbage slices down, hopefully without them falling apart on me. And I've got some olive oil that I'm drizzling on all of them. I also have my oven preheating to 375 right now. Then it's time to season these. I'm using salt, pepper, garlic, and some Cajun style seasoning. There are all kinds of options though. I know that Montreal steak seasoning is a really popular thing that people like to season their cabbage steaks, rounds, whatever you want to call them here roasted cabbage slices. I like roasted cabbage slices. But either way, just make sure that they are nice and seasoned. And then I'm going to flip them over and do the exact same thing on the other side. Cover them in some oil and some seasonings. I probably should have cut that out of that one, but that's okay. I'm just going to roast it with that little bit of stock in there and then you can always just eat around it. No big deal. Making sure to get this second side seasoned as well. And then all I'm doing with these is putting them in my 375 degree oven for probably like 30 or 40 minutes, flipping them halfway through. All right, here they are after just 20 minutes. Like I said, I'm gonna give them all 
myself flip very gently because I don't want them to fall apart like that one is trying to. It's actually probably a good thing I left the that little bit of stalk in that one because it'll help hold it together a little better, I think. And if a little bit comes off, that's okay. All right, I'm gonna get these back in the oven. All right, and here is at 35 minutes total. I'm trying to decide how hungry I am because I wouldn't mind letting them get a little more caramelized, but I'm also kind of, I want to eat them. These pieces off the edges though that I'm eating, like, wow, that's good. <laughs> These definitely could be eaten right now as is and as much as I want to. I think I'm going to put them in for just a few minutes longer. All right, that is after 10 more minutes. And I think that's about the length of time that I can bring myself to wait. I do have one more step that I'm planning with these. So this is a little bit of pizza sauce. So a couple of these, I'm going to kind of make into little cabbagey pizza kind of dealios, crustless pizzas, whatever you want to call them. Toss a little Italian seasoning on those. I've also got, this is just some leftover sausage, rice, and lentil stew that we had for dinner last night. You can see that when it's in the fridge, it kind of, it's not really stew anymore. And then there, all four of these ones that I've put stuff on are going to get some cheese. And I just want to try out a couple different ways that you could dress these up. I think there's all kinds of things you could do. A little more cheese on these pizza ones. And then I got pepperoni, of course, for these pizza ones. All right, and I'm going to put these back in the oven so that way the cheese can get all melty and the pepperoni can get hot and all that good stuff. These two little ones on the end, I'm just going to leave those as is. All in all, these are going back in the oven for like probably like three minutes. All right, I am ready to start eating these. It's just me and Andrew eating these. So I'll take one of the little ones. I'll take the littler of the one with the rice and beans. And I think this one's the littler one of the pizzas. I already know because the little pieces I've been eating that just the plain seasoned roasted cabbage tastes really delicious on its own. I think just the longer you roast it and the more it caramelizes, just the better and better and better that it'll get. <clears throat> that is a fantastic pairing, although I think that almost almost any savory com component that you would serve like with a side of vegetables, like with a side of roasted vegetables, will taste good as an accompaniment to this cabbage. Like I think like any kind of shredded chicken dish would be really good on top. I, I think there are so many options. And then the pizza here, which... I bet that's going to taste good because the cabbage and tomato were such a good combination in the uh, stuffed cabbage rolls. Mm. Also really good, but completely threw me off because the flavors are so completely different to what I got on going on over here. Alrighty friends, I hope that gave you some ideas or inspiration about how to incorporate more cabbage into your meal plan. It is just such a versatile and delicious vegetable and so budget friendly, hence why it is and will probably always be a staple in my household. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.